This video is about direct and inverse proportion. We're going to start by looking at direct proportion. So here we've got y is directly proportional to x. So what that means is if y goes up, x goes up. If y goes down, x goes down. So that's what a proportional relationship is. Sometimes you'll see it written as y and this symbol, which means directly proportional. So y is directly proportional to x can be written as y with this fish type symbol and then x. As an equation, we can write y is equal to kx. So k is a number that we can usually work out. So it's like a multiplier. So we could have y equals 2x. So every time x goes up by 1, y would go up by 2. We could have y equals 3x or y equals 4x or y equals 0.5x. So k could be any number depending on the relationship we're looking at. On a graph, this is a straight line graph that goes through the origin. So it could look anything like this. So as long as it goes through the origin, and it's a straight line, then it's a directly proportional relationship. So let's have a look at a question. So here's a question. Y is directly proportional to X. When Y is 2, X is 12. And we need to find the formula for Y in terms of X. So Y is directly proportional to X. So Y is directly proportional to X. So as an equation, we've got Y equals KX. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to work out what k is and then we've got our formula. So we know this information when y is 2, x is 12. So we can substitute y is 2 and x is 12. We can substitute them in and work out what k is. So we've got 2 equals k times 12. So to find k, we're going to divide both sides by 12 because we've got k times 12 at the moment. To get rid of a times, we do the opposite of times, which is divide. So we divide both sides by 12. So what we get is 1 sixth is equal to k. So that means k is 1 sixth. So our formula for y in terms of x y equals one sixth of x and then we could use that formula to work out what y is for a given value of x or what x is for a given value of y just by substituting them in okay now let's look at inversely proportion so y is inversely proportional to x that's written as y is proportional to 1 over x. So y is inversely proportional to x is written as y with the symbol, the fish type symbol, then 1 over x. As an equation, that's y equals k over x. So an inversely proportional relationship is y equals k over x. On a graph, that looks something like this. So it's uh, the graph of y equals something over x. Again, the value of k could be different depending on the relationship we're looking at. So k is just going to be any number. So it could be 2, 3, 4 or any, any number. And that gives us this relationship. So here's a question y is inversely proportional to x so we've got inversely proportional so that means as an equation we've got y equals k over x when y is 2 x is 12 find the formula for y in terms of x so again we've got to find out what the value of k is given these numbers so when y is 2 so we're going to substitute that in x is 12 we're going to substitute that in 
So we've got 2 equals k over 12. So to get rid of a divide this time, we do the opposite of divide, which is times. So we're going to times both sides by 12. Two 12s are 24. So k is 24. And that means our formula is y equals 24 over x. And then again, we could work out the value of x or y if we're given one of the other values by substituting them into this formula. Okay, let's look at a different question now. So we've got y is directly proportional to x squared this time. So y is directly proportional to x squared. It's directly proportional, so it's k times y equals k times x squared, y equals kx squared. When y is 12, no, when y is 14, x is 2. So we can substitute them in. So we've got y is 14 equals k times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, so 14 equals k times 4. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to get k by itself. And 14 over 4 is 3.5. So k is 3.5 this time. And our formula is going to be y equals 3.5x squared. Find the value of y when x is 4. So we've got our formula now. So we know the formula is y equals 3.5x squared. And we're going to substitute in the 4. 3.5 times 4 squared, which is 3.5 times 16. So 3 and a half 16s, 3.5 times 16 is 56. So y is equal to 56. Find the value of x when y equals 87.5. So we're just going to substitute in y this time into the formula 87.5 equals 3.5x squared. So we need to get x squared by itself first. So 87.5 divided by 3.5 and that gives us 25. So 25 is x squared and then we're going to square root x squared to get x by itself which gives us, well, plus or minus 5. So the square root of 25 is plus or minus 5, because we've got, we've got plus or minus because 5 times 5 makes 25, and negative 5 times negative 5 also makes 25. The force exerted on a spring F is directly proportional to the spring's extension E. So F is directly proportional to E. When a force of 5 newtons is exerted on the spring, it extends by 20 centimetres. If you want to pause the video and give this one a go now, you can. And I'll go through the answer after. As an equation, we've got F equals K times E. Directly proportional is K times inversely proportional k divide so f equals k times e when f is 5 e is 20 so we can work out what k is first and we do that by dividing both sides by 20 which would give us 5 divided by 20 is 1 quarter or 0 0.25 so that means the formula is f equals 1 quarter e so there's our formula. We've worked out what k is. We've got the formula. What force is required to create an extension of 50? So if E is 50, what is F? So we know F equals 1 quarter E. And E is 50. So 1 quarter of 50. 50 divided by 4 or a quarter times 50. That will be 12.5 and it's a force so we're going to put newtons 12.5 newtons okay here's another question if you want to pause the video again give this one a go you can 
or just keep watching. So we've got the time it takes is inversely proportional to the speed. So T is proportional to 1 over S. So that means T equals K divide S. So inversely proportional K divide. It takes one hour. So time is one when speed is 60. So if we substitute them in, we've got one equals K over 60. So that means if I times both sides by 60, K must be 60. So the formula is T equals changing K to 60, 60 over S. How much faster would the journey be at 70 miles per hour? So 70 miles per hour, that's speed. So what's time? Time equals 60 over 70. So what's that? So if we type that in the calculator, and then we press the time button. So if you press this one here, it'll convert it to time. So 60 over 70, then the time button gives me 51 minutes. And to the nearest second, we say 26 seconds. So how much faster is it? So it was one hour before. Now it's 51 minutes, 26 seconds. So if we take this away from 60, if we take it away from an hour, what have we got left? So one hour minus 51 minutes and 26 seconds. That would be eight minutes and 34 seconds. So eight minutes and 34 seconds faster.